Hey folks, it's Mangirl. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm finally retiring my Haku soldering station that you have seen in many of my videos. This station is the Haku 936 from 2009. So this thing is quite ancient. It still works beautifully and I've got a whole bunch of soldering iron tips for it. And I even use this in one of my latest videos. I went with the Haku FX888D, which is a natural evolution of the one I used to have. I'll give you a link to Amazon if you want to pick this up. But let's go ahead and do an unboxing first. You can see it came nicely packed with the mantle on top. Let's take a look at the packing list. We have the station, the iron, we have the holder, instruction manual, and a cleaning wire. So we'll take a look at what tip it comes with, but it should come with a tip as well. We've got the cleaning wire, we've got the cleaning sponge, we've got the holder, the nice blue and yellow color. We've got the transformer itself with that digital display so we can adjust the temperature up and down. So nice and compact. It's, it's a little bit cute looking, but I'm, I'm digging the blue and yellow. And the new one is from 2023, 14 years newer than my old version. And then we have the iron itself. It is a FX8801 65 watt. And it does come with a chisel head. Let me measure it. So the head is about 1.8 millimeters. When I compare the two irons, they look very, very similar. But I do notice that my old one was 24 volts, 50 watts. The new one is 26 volts, 65 watts. So the new one should heat up quicker and also maintain temperature better. Otherwise, they look very similar, similar kind of size, similar shape, which is great. Now, I know that the tips of the old one will not fit the new one. So I did purchase a few new tips as well. This is a T18D32, which looks like that. So a little bit bigger than the one that comes with. I also have this one, which is a T18-D08, so super tiny which should be good for those little mini flight controllers. I've got it all set up. I wanna show you how quickly you can swap these tips out. So all you gotta do is open up this nut. And if it's anything like my old iron, this piece here actually doesn't heat up too much. It'll, it'll get hot, but it's not gonna be as hot as this tip. So put that aside. And then this comes right out. Here is the heating element. You put the new tip in. You put this on. Tighten it down, not too tight, but that's it. What, 10 seconds to change out a tip. Unfortunately, the new iron doesn't have a place to store these tips. My old one on the base, it had two channels along each side where you could put these extra tips. And because if you're doing a hot swap, these can be pretty toasty. So you wanna put them on somewhere that's metal. So if I take this off right now and it's hot, well, where do I put it? Let's do the first power on. So it does have a button here, very similar to my old one. Let's flip it on. Okay, so this is the current temperature. We can see it's heating up. So this is heating up fairly quickly and it looks like it's going up to 750 degrees. So we're already at 400. And I do hear a little bit of a hum, nothing too annoying, but sounds a little bit louder than my old one which makes sense if it's more powerful. So come on, you're almost there. And this is all in real time, so you can see how quickly it heats up. And then we are now 750. Okay. And I think this little flashing light here, that means that it's actually heating. So let's go ahead and, and put a little bit of solder on here. Look at that, it's smoking. And then what we can do is we can adjust the temperature. If we hold this down, we can increase or lower the temperature. So let's say we wanna go down to 650. I can do that, I can go to 680. And now it's showing the current temperature. Oh, this is cool. So it'll show the current temperature when the current temperature is not, the, is not at the preset temperature. Now what I'm noticing is that it remembers your last set temperature. So right now we're at 500 degrees. If I turn this off and then I turn it back on again, it'll be set at 500 again. So it remembers the last set temperature, which is great. So although this seems very annoying to have to set every single digit. So if I want 620, I have to go here, you know, go up here, 
let's say 625. I have to go through and set every single digit. That's pretty annoying. But the good thing is this allows you to have up to five preset temperatures. So if you like to have, you know, low, medium, low, medium, and so forth, you can preset those and very easily switch between the presets. Now there are four settings that you can change on this. And the way you get to the setting menu is you hold the up button and then you flip the power on, keep holding the up and it says zero one. So zero one is the temperature selection. Now, do you want Fahrenheit or do you want Celsius? So we'll leave this as Fahrenheit. Then number three is the low temperature error setting. So that's fine. We'll leave that as the default. And then the one I really want is number 11, which is how we actually select a temperature. So earlier in the video, you saw me actually selecting individual digits. So, you know, 502, 711, I can select individual temperature that is setting zero or I can use the presets. So it comes with up to five presets preloaded. So let's try that. I'm going to flip this over to one, which is using presets. I'll say enter and then it'll ask me how many presets do you want? So our options are two, three, four or five. I'll say five. I'll say enter. And then the final number 14 is you can password lock these settings. I'm not going to do that. So at this point, if I just turn this off, it's not going to save my settings. And that's a good way to get out of here. If you think you screwed something up, what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the enter and then it's going to say, yes, I'm going to say, yes, I want to save. So now that it has saved, I should have the ability of flipping between those five presets. Now the manual tells you what those preset temperatures are. And by the way, the manual that it comes with is more of a quick start guide. There's the full manual on the Haku website. I'll link you in the description. So now that we're at 601, I can just press the up button and that tells me 601 is preset one. I can go to preset two which is 700. Number three is 750, eight or I guess 850. So if I want to go to 850, I press the enter button and then now it's going up to 850. So an easier way to navigate between those temperatures. Now that we have this in preset mode, you can go ahead and set your own presets. For example, I'm in P4 right now. And for some reason, my P4 says 801 degrees. That's kind of odd. So I can set this no different than how you would set the temperature in the prior mode and it will save this new temperature to the preset. So let's say I want my P4 to be 802. So even weirder. So now that I do that, it's going to save this 802. And let's do a quick test of this. Now, if I turn it off, and then when I turn it back on, I should see 802 saved as the preset. So let's go, let's go into preset five. So preset five is 850. So if I go now back down to preset four, 802. So you can set your own presets. So I think what I suggest you do is maybe have preset one as a very low temperature, kind of like a, a standby temperature. So that way, if you're working on your quad or your soldering and you need a break to do something else on your quad before you come back to soldering iron, you can have it on a low temperature. So you save the tip. So for example, here, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to set my low temperature here to, to 300 or, or maybe 320. So that way, if I ever need to do something else that doesn't require soldering, I'm, I'm not saying leave this unattended and leave it on. I'm just saying that if for some reason you need to not solder for five, 10, 20 minutes, you, you can just put it into preset one as opposed to turning it off. So now preset one is 320. I'm impressed how much functionality they crammed into these two buttons, but so far it's doing everything I wanted to do. Let's go ahead and take this for a test drive. You can see it's sitting in my idle temperature P1 of 320. What I want to do is I want to prep these solder pads. So I'm going to just pre tin these. Let's go ahead and increase the temperature. So 700 should be good. While that heats up to 700, I'm going to use this solder here, my TBS solder. And we can see it's heating up pretty quickly with this being a brand new tip. What I want to do is get some solder on there just to make sure the solder will stick properly. 
because initially it wasn't sticking on there, which is fine. It's a, it was a brand new tip. So now we can see it's sticking on there nicely. And really I should be using a bigger tip. So that big tip I showed you, because this tip here is quite small and it's really better for a flight controller, but we can see it's soldering up okay. I can see the temperature is staying at 700. So this looks good. Let's go a little bit more heat, given that I'm using a smaller tip. Let's go up to, what do you think, 800? Ooh, I mean 802, let's go up to 802. That looks quite nice for a tiny soldering iron tip. With a big tip, it will be a lot easier, but at 800 degrees, that soldered very nicely. Let me do the other side. So again, what I wanna do is get a bit of solder on my tip, because the solder does help with heat transfer. Heat up the pad a little bit, add some solder to it. That's it. Something you gotta just add a bit more just to cover the whole pad. We want the next one, add the solder, give it a second to heat up. We want the next one, add the solder, wait for it to heat up. Next one. Now that I'm done soldering, I'm gonna go back to P1, let that thing idle. Here's the first soldering with a new soldering station. This looks quite good. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I'm gonna put this down before I burn my finger.